everyone, it's Vinny, and I am back. Sorry, I was sick last week, but we are back. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we did cash on Life is an Audible as a single. Wasn't the best of weekends, but that definitely did help. Uh, we're back at Gulfstream Park this weekend, looking at Saturday and Sunday, so let's get into it. Saturday, race eight at Gulfstream is a maiden special weight for three-year-olds going one mile. And the number five money magician for Todd Fletcher is making his debut today. His second choice in the morning line at seven to two. And I really like this one. Irad gets aboard. Pedigree is great for this one mile uh, debut, in my opinion. And the gate works on this one, I think, are what really make this one stand out compared to the others uh that february 10th gate work going uh four furlongs in 48 seconds is very strong in my opinion i think this one's ready to roll first time out uh irad gets the mount which is always a great sign on uh on todd pletcher uh debut horses seven to two on the morning line i think if this one really is live it will probably get bet down so pay attention to the board as long as this one stays above around like that two to around that two to one price, I'll be playing this one to win. Uh, that is the number five money magician for Todd Pletcher. Race ten on Saturday is the return of Instant Coffee, who was on the Derby Trail last year for Brad Cox before being sidelined after a poor effort in the Louisiana Derby. He's back for Brittany Russell today and is the morning line favorite here, and I'm taking a shot against this one. He could very well win just based on talent, but I don't really think his running style of coming from the back really fits the how this Gulfstream Park track usually plays. In addition, I'm not a huge fan of the horse getting switched out of the Brad Cox barn. Not usually a great sign when they leave trainers like Brad Cox. Uh, nothing against Brittany Russell. She does a great job. I'm sure this horse will find the winner's circle probably at Laurel at some point this year. I just don't think today's the day. So for that reason, I'm going with the number three, uh, Dave Vernon for Bill Mott. Lightly raced four-year-old, making his four-year-old debut today. But that race back in November at Churchill Downs is very impressive going this distance. Uh, this horse has shown to have tactical speed, so I think will be much closer to the pace than a horse like Instant Coffee will be. And one going away at this distance last time out should be no problem. I uh, there definitely seems to be pace in here. I'm hoping this horse sits about two lengths off the lead and just makes one big move. He is second choice in the morning line at three to one. I'm hoping he drifts up a little bit with a horse like Instant Coffee in here, who I'm expecting will take a lot of money. Uh, but yeah, as long as this horse is around, you know, three to one, uh, three to one, the four to one, nine to two, I'll be playing this horse to win. I think he looks. I think he looks very tough here. Uh, Bill Mott's very good at getting these horses ready off of uh, off of layoffs, so I, I think this one just fits how this race is gonna is gonna play out. Looking at Sunday's card, race number seven is a maiden special weight for three year old fillies going one mile, and Chad Brown has the number two Restless Dreamer here, who I think has a very solid chance of being a good filly uh, for him this year. Uh, she's a three chimneys farm homebred sired by street sense. This one mile distance should be no issue. And she's been working very, very well. Um, her gate works are a little, aren't the best that I would like to see, but Chad usually doesn't have, unless they're monsters for Chad, his gate works, uh, with his horses are never anything to write home about in my opinion. So this one kind of fits right in with, uh, with his others. He usually trains them to come from off the pace anyway, and based on the works, this one does have some early speed. I'm expecting, uh, as long as she doesn't blow the break, I think Restless Dreamer is going to get a very good trip here, and if she's good enough, I'm expecting her to be able to pull away late. I'm hoping she's around third or fourth choice here with some of the other, uh, with some of the other entries in here. I'm hoping to get around four to one. If she's a little higher, great. Uh, if she's lower, then kind of like the the main special weight on Saturday. If she's taking money, it means she's probably live. So wouldn't wouldn't deter me from playing her, but I would definitely prefer a little bit of a price on a Chad Brown first time around the dirt. Looking at race nine on Sunday is an allowance optional claimer, a uh, group of four-year-olds here. And there's two horses I'm kind of interested in. The number four, Donegal Forever for Todd Pletcher. 
was very impressive on debut last year at Belmont and then was sidelined with an injury. He hadn't raced since, but showed a ton of promise, was very hyped before that debut. So excited to see him get back on the track. I'm expecting this one to be the favorite. I think if this one runs back to uh, to the talent that he showed on debut, he's going to be very tough to beat. Todd is very good at getting these horses ready off the layoff. So the number four Donegal forever is definitely going to be on my tickets. Uh, the horse I'm going to play in exact is in here with uh, with him, though, is the number two Empire Strikes Fast for Bill Mott. Yes, I'm a Star Wars fan. It's a Star Wars reference, but I do really like this horse. Looked really good breaking his maiden last year in his debut. And then the connections, it kind of seemed like forced Bill to try to get this one on the Triple Crown Trail. He went right to the Lexington. Wasn't the right move and then came back in an allowance race and it just wasn't the spot. Um, they kind of rushed this one last year. And I think it kind of messed up how Bill had been hoping to bring this one along. Coming in off a bit of a layoff, I think Bill can kind of do what he wants with him this year. I think this is a great starting point. I, I don't think this race is particularly tough. Um, I, Donegal Forever definitely has talent, but the rest of the field, I think you kind of know what you're going to get out of them. So if Empire Strikes Fast gets back to the way he he broke that maiden and uh, Bill, uh, Bill Ma can bring him along how I think he wanted to last year, I think this horse has a chance to be like a decent, like, listed stakes grade three type runner uh i'm expecting to get a little bit of a price on him today uh especially with donegal forever in here i'm hoping the exact with these two is going to be paying around 10 to 1 uh when we look at the probables uh closer to pro uh closer to post time as long as it's paying 10 to 1 both ways i am going to play it uh if it's not i'll probably just play the four over the two um, depending on what the two over the four is, I'm, I'll play a small one that way as well. But I do think Empire Strikes Fast uh, does improve off of his last two races, which I think he was just rushed into to try to get him in some uh, stakes races last year. And not usually how Bill Mott trains. He likes to bring them along and then get them into the stakes races. So I think this one was just rushed last year and hopefully off the layoff and now four-year-old he will get back to showing the talent that he showed on debut. But best of luck if you are playing Gulfstream Park this weekend. It also is a big weekend at, uh, at Fairgrounds this weekend with the Risen Star. I know the dudes have the betting Bible out. Uh, pick that up if you haven't already. My top four for all of the races are in there in the consensus section. Uh, but Aaron and Jared do a great job with that. So best of luck if you are playing the horses this weekend, and I will see you next time.